friends, it has been a hot minute since we last spoke. Coco and I have once again been transported to another dimension. I believe it is a spell cast upon us by a powerful mage. No. Oh, Coco says we do not see things as they are. He says we see them as we are. Oh, <laughs> by the gods. That is deep, Coco, and sounds made up. Maybe you should slow down on those magic mushrooms. But I digress. As we are currently passengers in this explorer's head, <laughs> can you imagine? As he wanders through this forest that he was told to steer clear of at all of the costs. It reminds me of the darkened woods from the Dragonlancer's land of Ancelan, where the undead make sure all who enter are quickly vanquished. This particular forest all stories of satanic rituals and ghosts that will lead those fool enough to enter to the untimely doom. I wonder what would happen if this one dies while we are in his head. Hmm, that sounds terrible. It has been told that voices will haunt your mind in this parallel forest. Oh, that's funny, because if this explorer could hear us, we would be adding to the legend of this forest. I would tell him that he should never have come here alone, especially so close to the night. Ah, he was warned repeatedly that this is no place for the living. In the movie about the halflings that cry about the jewelry, the old forest that lies on the eastern border of the Shire in the Middle Earth. It is an ancient sentient forest that is home to Old Man Willow, a malevolent tree that ensnares travelers who stray from the path. The forest serves as a significant obstacle for the crying halfling and his companions as they journey to the Rivendell. This forest that they call Parallel reminds me of that one. No. <laughs> Coco says no. He says that this parallel forest is nothing like that. He says this one was planted in six foot intervals back in 1912 by the order of Superintendent Frank Rush. In the spring of 1912 in order to shore up wood supply for future projects. Hmm. And that this 16 acre parallel forest in Lawton, Oklahoma was planted then. But Coco, I thought it was to combat the Dust Bowl. No. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Coco says that the Dust Bowl didn't happen until the 30s and that I shouldn't believe everything I read on this thing you call the internets. <laughs> Coco is right. Many, 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 many. Almost all of these so-called journalists cannot do math very well and are full of the goblin dung. But I digress. Haunted forest always intrigued the mad dog, as I find them a captivating subject in the folklore and mythology, he, even the literature, and even those stories around the campfire and the urban legends of this world and many others. These enigmatic woodland realms are shrouded in the mystery, their dense canopies concealing the many, many secrets that both intrigue and terrify the shit out of those who dare to venture within. Ooh, with a mouth-water blend of the dark, smoky history, savory supernatural phenomenon, earthy, eerie, acidic atmospheres, the sheer macabre, when the mind begins to ponder, is a robust, very robust thing that terrorizes one's sleep. No. Oh, Coco says I have to stop using recipe adjectives because his stomach is beginning to growl. Oh, I am with the hunger too, my brother. At the heart of many in this dark history, many, many of these forests are said to have been the backdrop for tragic events, battles or crimes, transgressions with remnants and tormented spirits, tormented spirits of these occurrences. They still linger, <laughs> linger in the shadows. I like that word linger, sounds a little clicker. Incidentally, Coco and I are saving up our money to open our own tavern in Brothel. That would be delightful. Now, stories of the lost souls who met untimely deaths within their depths. 
their restless spirits forever haunt the woodland paths. Isolation, desolation, and abandonment. The dense foliage, winding paths, and the absence of someone to even talk to. Oh, shivers. <laughs> Linger. They create an atmosphere of uneasy solitude. I too would feel this unease if it were not for the presence of Coco and the fact that we are somehow passengers in this explorer's mind. It is difficult to pinpoint one thing that makes this forest different than from so many others. No. Hmm. Coco says when we try to pick out anything by itself, we find it hitched to everything else in the universe. <laughs> he says that it's from the explorer John Mills' book, My First Summer in Sierra. When did you find time to read, Coco? It is better if I don't know, but I digress. We found out that these 16 acres do hold what at first appears to be an altar, but then we discovered that the early Spanish gold miners built it to assist in their smelt of the gold, which led us down more rabbit holes. Oh my goodness, your internet is frightening. One being that this forest was used by many outlaws to absc... Abscare? I cannot say this word. They used it to hide evidence and even body parts. Oh, disgusting. Which initially sounds terrible, and then upon further thought, ridiculous and laughable. Because why pick these 16 acres that will be frequented just by the fact that they stand out amongst the other 60,000 acres of the beautiful Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge? You could put them anywhere else and your odds of never being discovered would jump exponentially. Oh my goodness. The refuge has a large area where none but the military are permitted to wander. Hmm. Which makes you wonder. <laughs> no. Hmm. Coco says due to the proximity of Medicine Park, which began in 1908 when it was founded as Oklahoma's first resort town. Oh, that's nice. The founder, John William Elmer Thomas, fell in love and with every aspect of it, from the unique cobblestone deposits to the mountains and plains that surrounded the town to the wilderness beyond the horizon, not to mention the freaking gold. He bought the land and began construction on what he called the Medicine Park Summer Resort and Health Spa. Hmm, sounds nice. Referring to the medicinal qualities of the nearby Medicine Creek that the Plains Indians had told him about while visiting. What started out as a simple resort quickly became a vacation area for the outlaws, miscreants, and bootleggers. It was the Roaring Twenties, after all, which I am told was quite the time. But it wasn't a lawless town like you may assume. Remember, you assume you make ass out of you and me. At the same time, you find upstanding citizens and politicians strolling the streets. Please, <laughs> there is nothing upstanding about politicians. <laughs> they are sharing the road with the soldiers and peoples whose name will go down in the history of this land. This is a town that has been a gateway to President Roosevelt and Al Capone, whoever they are. Will Rogers and Bonnie and the Clyde. Oh, I remember we watched that cinematic musing. <laughs> Interesting. Jack Abernathy and Pretty Boy Floyd. Hmm. And after this hike through the woods with Mad Dog and Coco, we'll make this one travel there for some food, because we heard they had the very good food at the medicine park. Hmm. But this forest more reminds me of one of those where the bear gives the young children the nightmares as he wanders the wood with the depressing donkey to find the honey. Oh. Only that one, it was 100 acre wood, and this is only 16 acres of 20,000 red cedar trees planted in Comanche County. Oh yes, just shortly after the state of Oklahoma was created. Documentation always trumps the conversation. Not so much in Mad Dog and Coco's world where the sword and the sorcery trump the bullshittery. But we are in this crazy explorer's head tonight, so I digress. Back to the forest. Haunted forests are rumored to be home to a myriad, a myriad, a, a mire. Oh, I cannot say this word. They are host to a boatload of supernatural creatures, which we are very familiar with. The witches and the demons and the mythical beasts, such as werewolves and fairies, are said to lurk in the shadows. 
these are not mythical. We see werewolves and fairies all the time in Mad Dog and Coco's world. Their presence adding to the aura of menace and intrigue. This parallel forest has been said to host a ghost that will tap upon one's shoulders and even whisper upon the wind. And now, as we listen and hear the tops of these woodland giants knock, and the breeze does in fact sound a little bit like the whispers of the lost souls. It reminds me of the forest that the children are forbidden to go to in that movie where the adults make the kids solve all their life-threatening problems with their wand <laughs> against supernatural foes that somehow live on in their women's brooches. I don't know. I think they call them crow cracks or something. It's like seven movies long just to crush a guy with no nose. Oh, disgusting. It's called, ah yes, the Forbidden Forest where they have those huge many pots that move spiders. Oh, nasty, nasty, creepy bastards. There must be other forests here like this. No. Coco says there is a forest in Japan known as the Suicide Forest, which is notorious for its tragic history of, you guessed it, the suicides, and is believed to be haunted by the spirits of the deceased. He says very similarly that the Hokobaku Forest in Romania often referred to as the Bermuda Triangle of Transylvania, is renowned for its eerie atmosphere and numerous reports of paranormal activity. Coco and I were once in that Romania where we had to kill this silly vampire. <laughs> Quite hysterical, but the story for another day. He also adds that the dark forest from the series of the musings by C.S. Lewis where the children hide in the closet is a sinister and enchanted woodland that borders the land of Narnia. Hmm, that sounds interesting. Shrouded in perpetual darkness and inhabited by creatures both magical and malevolent. Oh, terrible combination. Ah, uh, that's a bit disturbing, Coco. I prefer the story of the one that robs the tax money from the dirty government and gives it back to the people that have earned it. The Sherwood Forest ones with the Robin of the Hood. That is good. <laughs> I like that one. You remind me of that one, Little John Coco, because you are freaking massive. All pale in comparison to which will terrify the spirit. The Forest of Sickle the Wicked from Mad Dog and Coco's world. Oh. This one is home to a terrible forest dragon that rules the countryside with an iron fist in the darkest of magic. But that is a story for another time, my friends. Now we watch as this imbecile who was warned not to go to the parallel forest, especially at the night, does just that and stumbles into a grey beast that at first he thought was the Bigfoot. <laughs> I think he almost shit himself. And then he found himself almost trampled before he got a few trees between them. Let's watch what he did. Well, what he got on the films anyway. Oh, that looks terrifying and I must say delicious. It makes my dog long for both of the food groups. A porterhouse steak with a side of bacon. Mmm, that is always good. The longhorn steer is a thing of beauty. As long as you don't get poked from the business end of those horns. Now, if you are still here, come closer and listen. Mm, listen to me. We explored right through to the Cedar Creek climb the hill to get back and better look at the forest. This explorer tried to fly his pet warforge, but due to the proximity of the fort still, this airspace was restricted. 
The forest with its dense canopy can become so dark at night that one cannot see a hand in front of one's face. So as the sun set, we tried to yell, to communicate with this one to leave before he could not find his damn truck. No. Hmm. Coco says we meditated deeply to touch upon the Ask Akashic to touch upon the Akashic records. And you may ask what that is because I was about to. But Coco said they are the repository of every thought, word, and deed of every living being, good, bad, ugly, smelly, beautiful, and awful in all times, past, present, future. It's a compendium of knowledge of all life forms and entities. He says that there is no judgment or implied penalty in the records. That's nice. He says they simply are a record of each soul's journey through the infinite. Oh, that sounds wonderful and very made up, Coco. However, we will use them to give him the feeling to leave immediately. The records also told us to tell you. I like that. Told us to tell you. Told us to tell you. You should tickle the subscribe and like buttons. And you should stay frosty and aware, you beautiful people. And my friends, if the gods will it, and Mad Dog and Coco see another sunrise, us and the records say you are loved. And thank you. Thank you very much. We will see you soon with more monstery goodness. Maybe Coco and I will get back to our journey through the jungle to rescue the little ones. Only the gods know. Thank you, my friends.